Hello, it's me again, Kirsty Meekin from Nail Nails. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do some more My Little Pony amazing shizzmanness. So I'm going to do Apple Jack for you. She's like the little cowgirl, kind of. We're gonna start, I've prepped the nail, I have dehydrated, I've primed the nail, now we're gonna fit the sculpting form. Because we haven't done this for a while, so we're just gonna refresh your memory on this, in case you haven't watched that video. So, we're gonna take the little tab out of the middle and put it on the back side of the form. We're going to take it between the thumbs. I've still got a little bit of paint on there from uh, yesterday's <laughs> video. <laughs> going to give it a little roll between the thumbs to create a bit of a curve. Then I'm going to pop it on here. Now Lauren, our model today, has got quite a nice natural smile line. So she's got a high hypernicium. A hypernicium is the bit of skin that seals the nail bed to the nail plate. It's a bit that hurts if you catch it. Yeah. So, because Lauren has had nails on for many, many years, hers has, even, has grown up even further. Would you say that's true? Yeah. Yeah. So it grows up even further, so her nail bed's actually really nice and long, which I love. So, however, fitting a sculpting form makes it a little bit more difficult, because you can see that that does not match. So, what we're going to do, we're going to cut it out. So I'm going to pop it up there and I'm just going to, by eye, cut this smile line a little bit more deeper. Oh, that's a lot better, you can see. I'm going to close the end of this form. We're going to do a stiletto. Make sure it fits from side to side nicely. Make sure it's nice and secure under that hypernicium and then I'm going to close the rest of the form as long as I know it's straight. I'm just sliding that a little bit just to make it a little bit more straighter and we're going to go to about number three on this form. These forms are dead easy to use, they're great for lots of different stuff, obviously they're great for long nails because they are super super long. So. I've already prepped the nail, primer on, everything. So we're ready to go with product application. I'm going to use warm beige today. Some Max Adhesion liquid. One thing I'll tell you about the Cover Pink powders, so all these sort of camouflage Cover Pink powders, the, they have got a lot of pigment in them. The more pigment they have in them, the less malleable they are. So they sort of... They can be a little bit more difficult to use when the pigment is super high. But what do you want? Super pig super high pigment or like an easier flowing product? I'll go for the pigment. So I'll show you what I mean. It's not it's not I'm making out like it's really bad. It's not, it's just very slightly different. So I'm gonna pick up a bead now. So let that bounce into a nice shiny bead. And then you can start to move this around. So I'm just going to bring that bead down. So that I can really control that nice and easy. I think that the clear is probably the easiest powder to control because of its lack of pigment. Anything with a high pigment in it, no matter what brand it is or anything, will be harder to control. See now we've got a massive coverage there, whereas I've used lots of other products before that are cover pink but aren't actually as opaque as this. What you're going to do is let that bead go nice and shiny, like that, let it settle and then start to move it around. If you do it too early, it'll start to stick to your brush and you'll be convinced that you cannot use that bead. But you can. It's all about the timing. So we're going in. Pick up a bead. Place it on. Let it do its thing. 
and then you can start to stroke it and pat and press it into the places that you want it and the shape that you want it. I hope I'm making sense to you people who are watching. I understand what you mean. You understand it well. God, anybody will understand it though, you do. Yep. I'll show you what will happen if you do it too early. So you put a bead on and then you start to try and move it. You wipe it off onto your brush, it'll go everywhere. It'll be more difficult to control. So you've got to let it do its thing, let it start to polymerize and then move the bead. I'm making sure I've got a nice apex in the back third of this nail. As I look at that from the side, we have a slight dip here. So I'm just going to rectify that. And I'm not picking up a massive bead. I'm wiping my brush, that's giving it time to actually polymerize and be ready to be stroked and patted and pressed into position. And there you have it. What we're going to do now is wait for it to set a little bit. I'm going to put a um, pinching tool on so I can pinch it nice and narrow and slim because you want that slim, sleek stiletto. So I'm just popping the pinching tool on, letting it pull tight and then adding a little bit of pressure. Right. Is that a lot of bit of pressure? No, it's warm. It's warm? Yeah. Feel really? It. Go, feel it. Go. Put your finger on it. Wow. Didn't know it's, well, it's a chemical reaction, so obviously it's going to be. So what happens is you, you mix the acrylic powder with the monomer. Yeah. So then that makes you be able to shape it, but yeah. then the monomer, monomer that evaporates to leave a hard. Well, polymerizes and link chains. Chains right. start to link, right. and then it sets hard. Don't evaporate. Chemistry with Kirsty Meeker. Yeah, don't evaporate. It's like oily. So put this in. <laughs> <laughs> I was talking with a mouthful and everything. I know, but I'm still putting it Sorry. in. It's great outtakes. It needs must. And all that. So I'm filing this nail like I always do. Side walls, then the cuticle area. sides are really straight coming straight out of the natural nail side walls so when I say side walls if you don't know what a side wall is you need to check the video out that is called nail terminology the side here yeah yeah check that video out you'll learn all about nail terminology it's very fun but very educational as well Going over with a white block now, just to smooth out that nail, smooth the demarcation. I bet they've all fast forwarded this bit and they're all just going to fast forward it straight to the nail art. If you have, then or whatever, but I understand. There we are, gorgeous stiletto nail. Dusty, dusty, dusty with the dusty brush and then I'm going to wipe over with acetone just to smooth that nail out even more I'm just going to give them all a little wipe now just so they're all ready I'm going to work on the thumb first I'm just going to change my paper because it's covered in dust I don't want to wipe my brush through any dust so put some colours on the palette and they are copper burnt sienna brilliant red brilliant yellow and orange yellow and i will put a bit of black and white on as well oh we need a green we need a green we need a green we're going to use brilliant green light okay so i'm going to start by outlining we did basically it's the same as we've done in the other videos slightly different because she's got a hat on and things like that we need to take into consideration where the hat's going so I'm actually going to start with the hat. I'm just going to water down this sort of, I think it's called burnt sienna this. I'm just <coughs> going to start off by outlining, basically planning and mapping 
where everything is going to go. Started with the hat because I wanted to fit the hat in. And I'm going to do a hair coming down here. See now when I look at that, that face, there's not enough room for that face there. So I'm going to take this hair a bit lower here. And then we'll have more room for the face. And possibly take the hair up a little bit higher. I'll show you a little trick. 3D brush. And a little bit of gel residue solution, wipe off solution. And put your brush in and then you can just dampen it, take off the excess. And then, wee, look at that. You just use it like a rubber. So it just erases it away and it also keeps the nail nice and clean. So now you can see we have more room for the face. And I'm going to outline the face. Mm. Let me show you what I'm mooning at. See, this needs to be further back. This neck does. So we're going to use our little tool, a little trick here to remove that. And I'm going to move this hair back even more. So I'm going to rub all that out. This is why it's so important to just sort of map out things that you're doing freehand like that. So now we have this mapped out, we can start to add the real colour that we're going to use. Just going to make this orange a little bit more paler. It's like an orange yellow. Maybe we're going to put a bit of that in as well. We're going to do the face. A chest. A neck. Fill that in. I'm going to do the same with the hat. I'm going to mix a bit of that light yellow with that burnt sienna. Yeah! This really pale yellow that we've got, I'm going to use that for her mane. So if we go, not adding any detail now, just literally adding colour. So we weren't actually going to do any more My Little Ponies, but everybody's like gone a bit bonkers over them and been saying, Come on, we need more like my little ponies. So it is, is it Texas that like is a bit cowboy? Yes. It is. So well, I've got that. Not just Texas, but yeah, Texas is definitely. Because I've, you know, I've been to America, not been to Texas. America's a big place. So I've been to Los Angeles many times. It's like my favorite place in the world. One of the reasons it's my favourite place in the world is because it's so close to Las Vegas. Another reason it's like my favourite place is because it's where Michael Jackson's from. I love Encino because that's where Michael's from. And you know I love Michael. Gonna go over the mane now. So her hair. I need, what have I forgot? What have I forgot to put on? What have I, got, what have I not put on? Yeah. I'll put the ear on now. Simple shape to do. Before I start adding any more detail, they have a cutie spot on their hip. And we're going to do Applejack's cutie spot, which is an apple, believe it or not. We're going to put that up here. I'm going to do the eye. So it's a big eye. I mean, they must be able to see to the end of the earth with these eyes, they're that big. Why the eye just takes up the face? That's some big, big old eyes going on here. So I'm just going around and adding the detail to the hair now. This is quite a nude colour that I've mixed. So just gone round the eye there and done the eyelashes. And we're gonna add the black pupil. And then we need the green to do her green iris on her eye. Right, it's got some shine on this pupil. And I definitely think that this is what brings it to life. I'm just adding that in with some white paint. So reflection there as well. 
I will love it. Need to do a hair on this side here. I'm just adding a bit of a background here. I'm using the, the copper. I'm using it quite watered down because all I want is that little bit of sparkle. Just adding a little bit of shadow just to make a pop out of the background a little bit more. Right, I'm going to let that dry and then I'm going to seal all that in with mega gloss. So that's Applejack completely finished. I'm going to pop some cuticle oil on. There you are. There's another My Little Pony for you. Apple Jack, I hope you enjoy. Don't forget to subscribe to this choo 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 choo. Don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel. You can do that by pressing below. And then also don't forget to like us on Instagram and Facebook. So we'll see you next time.